finish off, we're going to use that Monte Carlo simulation once again on a new application, calculating out the minimum monthly payment for a loan. So let's imagine I have some outstanding balance. If many of you are college students watching this, if you're in the class, you're a college student, but it, it's on YouTube, so anyone can be watching it. But let's imagine you took out a wonderful student loan that we all know and love of $20,000. And guess what? That, you got to pay that back. That's America. Uh, but it also has some interest rate attached to it. Roughly speaking, uh, I think it's like 2.7% uh, annually. So given that situation, we could ask a simple question. And without using financial formulas that are going to kind of give us an approximation, but they're one approximation, what would be the minimum amount I would need to pay off or I would need to pay if I wanted to pay this off in, let's say, for example, one year? I know that's a lot to pay off in one year, uh, but just again, we're, we're playing off of theory here. How would we do this? So again we have a simple formula for this and we use something like Monte Carlo to guess effectively. We can design out something like a function called minimum monthly payment that takes in that balance and that rate. Now the first thing you're seeing here is I'm creating sort of a constant. This original balance is going to reset our uh, balance every single time we finish a simulation. And the reason why is very similar to what we saw with our nested loop structures of, where are we, are we? Of resetting Y so that we can do a process again. So we're going to do that same process of being able to reset our value. And very similar to what we saw with Newton's method where we are uh, gonna make an initial guess. What if I pay zero dollars? Will that magically pay off my loan in a year? No, of course not, but it serves as our base of like, okay, we can grow from here. So a, uh, a guess, well, I'll just call it sort of a, uh, a guess with air quotes. And then we just run our simulation. Every single time we see that balance is greater than zero after we're done running it, reset it. So in this case, we're going to say, once again, we're only working off of uh, one year, but you could expand this to two years, five years, however many years you want, you know, pick the number of months. And in our case, we're going to say, first, I make my payment. So whatever my balance was, I'm going to pay $50 to that. So my balance is updated, minus $50. Then apply interest. So apply interest. Interest. And again, so the reason this is where sort of these orders, for example, could be flipped. In that situation, uh, it depends on effectively when uh, the interest on the loan is compounded. Is it compounded at the beginning of the month or the end of the month? And I'm not getting into that nonsense, but the question is basically, uh, does your payment happen first or does interest happen first? Have fun figuring that one out. But the question once again is, we do this 12 times. Run through it, in our case, run it through every month. If our balance is still greater than zero, we did not effectively pay off our loan in the 12 months we attempted to. Reset balance. So again, we're just, we start where we began with again our 20,000 uh, and then uh, increment payment by $10. And this is only one approach. There are a number of different approaches here uh, or you could say let's increment by $1, but I'm, I'm just shorthanding it, but effectively saying, okay, well, uh, 
zero dollars, trying to pay off as our uh, at zero dollars a month didn't pay off our loan. So what if we paid ten dollars a month? No, and just playing this out, uh, vi you know, uh, verbally playing that out. Well, no, ten dollars a month didn't work. What about twenty? No. What about thirty? No. What about forty? No. What about fifty? Etc. Until we get to a value that actually uh, works in our favor, and so just so we can even see that in action, I've built out this and I've added in some functions to format my money and my percentage sign, so it looks nicer. But that's you know, in our case, just uh, a normal little thing. And let's. Reset this so you don't just magically see the answer. I know it was there and you can pause and you know uh, But anyways, so I've loaded in that memory and I, I have that same function just with more comments going on there, but let's say for example uh, Let's say, you know, you didn't take all 20,000. That's actually a pretty smart uh, play uh, if you need $20,000 uh, plus, if you're working and all that stuff, so let's say you accept $8,000 of your student loan, it's still going to be at 2.7, roughly speaking, percent uh, interest. So again, okay, I have $8,000. What would I need to pay uh, a month to pay it off, roughly speaking, or what would I need to pay roughly each month to pay it off in one year? So again, I've set my variables. I'm calculating out that payment, and then just to kind of uh, see what's going on here, I'm going to add in some flavor text to just draw this out a little uh, to pay off your initial balance at your interest rate. Now, this little bit here, end equaling zero or quote, this is effectively just a quick way in Python to say don't hit enter after you print. Uh, instead of it be printing on two lines, Print it on one line. Okay, so at our uh, annual interest rate, or at our percent, interest in one year requires paying some amount of money a month. Okay, to pay off $8,000 at 2.7% interest in one year requires paying, roughly speaking, uh, $680 a month. There you go. That's a fun little calculator uh, for some depressing uh, times. But again, okay, maybe you don't want to do 8,000. Uh, so we could expand this. Let's say I want to pay off a student loan in three years, 36 months. Reset that uh, to pay it off in three years. Ah, okay, to pay off that 8,000 loan at two point. $240 a month. Okay, Google, how much would I get for my kidneys on the black market? 